That's a DG. That's not bad. Come on. It's my initials. Hi, I'm Dan Giusti. Today I'm being challenged to prepare three delicious and affordable dishes using eggs. Oh, oh mother Definitely could not be a hibachi chef. We'll be highlighting them in breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all for less than $3 a plate. I think when most people think about cooking eggs, they think about cooking them as they are, say for breakfast. They can be used to thicken sauces, give structure to baked goods, and used as a binding agent in a variety of preparations. Eggs are easy to transform, they're inexpensive, and they're super high in protein. Today I'm gonna to show you a few techniques to transform eggs that are typically reserved only for professional kitchens. Let's get started with breakfast. First up, breakfast, and for breakfast, I'm gonna be preparing hollandaise toast and asparagus with a poached egg. Hollandaise sauce is usually kind of ladled over poached eggs, like in a dish like Eggs Benedict. But in today's dish, we're gonna spoon it atop pieces of baguette, and we're gonna broil it in the oven so it gets kind of crispy and sets up on the bread, so it's no longer a sauce anymore. So one of the main components of our dish today is asparagus. So to figure out where to trim your asparagus, just break it, and wherever it breaks, we're gonna use that point as a guide to trim the rest of the asparagus. I'm going to season our boiling pot of water with salt. So I'm gonna go right in all at once, being careful not to splash myself. And we're not gonna blanch these for a long time. But we wanna just get to a point where they're just cooked, so they taste a little different, but they still maintain this structure and crunchiness. That's what we want. All right. When I press the outside of the asparagus, it's giving a little bit. You see it's still very sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out right into ice water. If we didn't put these asparagus into ice water, they'd continue to cook, and they'd also become this very drab green color that we don't want. We want them to be nice and vibrant. Next step, we are going to poach our eggs ahead of time. So when it's actually time to finish the dish, it's much easier. We have the water pretty hot. We want just enough water to cover the egg. We have a little bit of white vinegar. What the vinegar is gonna do is help kind of set up the egg white as soon as the egg goes in. We wanna crack it as close to the water as we can. This way it will help contain the egg. And you'll see some of these eggs, like this one, the white has come out quite a bit. It's fine, I'm not gonna stress about it. I was telling everyone here I used to poach eggs all the time as like I'm some pro and now I can barely do it. But all right, so once we get to a point, you start to see they're like kind of floating. You can see that the white is solid. You can feel it with your tool. Once the white's set, they're done, but they're fragile. So if you put this on a white tray and try to like take it off with a spatula, it could be a little dangerous. But putting it into water just like that, very easy. I'd argue that it's easier to cook a poached egg than it is to say cook like an over easy egg. It's more peaceful too, just kind of. You know, we're just here versus like in a hot pan and like things are splattering everywhere. All right, our poached eggs are ready. They're in the cold water. We'll come back to them later. It's time to get into the second egg component of our dish, which is the hollandaise sauce. So this is what's called a double boiler setup, bowl over the heat. The reason we're doing this is because if we whisked our sauce directly in a pot, the eggs would scramble. So this is like a more gentle heat, gives us a little more leeway to mix our sauce. We're gonna start with our eggs. We're gonna be using egg yolks for this. We're gonna reserve our egg whites. We have a bit of lemon juice here. We're gonna add our lemon juice into the egg. We're gonna whisk it together just so it's well incorporated before we put it onto the heat. So I'm on the heat now. Once you put things on the heat, you have to keep whisking because you could create scrambled eggs relatively easily if you're not paying attention. So I'm gonna start adding butter right away and we're just gonna keep whisking. The next thing is if we pour this butter into our egg too quickly, we'll end up with a split sauce, which means that we'll have kind of the solid part, these eggs, and we'll have the butter, and it will be not together. We want this to be together. Get my, get my pump on right now. You can see how thick and ribbony it is now, and that's because the eggs have thickened the butter. I think we're good. Our hollandaise sauce is set. We're gonna cut our baguette and then top it with the hollandaise sauce. A beautiful little baguette here, huh? Huh? I think it's beneficial to let the hollandaise just cool a little bit. As it cools, it becomes even thicker, which makes it easier to spoon. This is it now. It's time to broil our hollandaise toast. Look at these beauties. Whole different thing. Hollandaise sauce is delicious. In my opinion, putting it on something and broiling it, even more delicious. So these are looking great. Time to plate this thing up. Our eggs are still cold. I have a pot of hot water here. I'm gonna choose one of our eggs that I like. It's cooked already. We just need to warm it through. 
why the egg warms up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut our hollandaise toast because they are slabs at the moment. When I'm plating, obviously you want it to look good, but it also needs to be functional. All right, we're gonna season this, salt. We can do some pepper as well, and then paprika. And there you have it, folks. Four portions of hollandaise toast and asparagus with a poached egg coming out to $11.80, and that is $2.95 per serving. I'm ready to have some fun. This is hands-on here. No cutlery. Break my yolk. Da, 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 da. Mm. It's delicious. The lemon is absolutely essential in hollandaise sauce. It's pretty rich, everything. We got yolk, we got the hollandaise sauce baked in, but that lemon really kind of punches through everything. Mm. When you're eating the asparagus with the egg yolk, it's almost like a crudite. It's like this nice fresh piece of asparagus with an egg yolk sauce. It is lunchtime, and for lunch, I'm gonna be preparing a delicious summer squash quiche with a salad of roasted red peppers. A quiche is very different in texture to say a frittata or an omelet. Those items are pretty much just egg cooked. Quiche can be pretty rich. It is this egg custard in this buttery pie shell. So topping it with something like a roasted red pepper salad with a decent amount of acidity and it really balances the dish out. The first step of making our quiche will be to roast the summer squash as well as some onion. I don't wanna slice it too thin because there's so much water in this. When you roast these and when the water evaporates, if they're too thin, they'll like kind of turn to nothing. I will be seasoning the squash inside of a bowl with the olive oil. So we have two pieces of large garlic in here and between the oil and the salt, and as we mix this, the flavor of the garlic will get picked up by the summer squash. Take the time to make sure that the pieces of summer squash are spread out well and they're not on top of each other. Otherwise, they're gonna steam and they're not gonna roast like we want them to. I'm gonna go throw these in the oven at 375 degrees for about 10 minutes. So while the summer squash is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and cut an onion up. Adding something like onion to this will make it even more savory. It'll be really nice. Give it a nice flavor. I'm just gonna toss them back in this bowl because there's residual oil in there. Go check on the old squash in the oven and then we're gonna go ahead and add this on the tray. Squash looks great. We've garnered a lot of nice color on the squash, but you also see that it really shrunk quite a bit, but it looks awesome. Kind of just spread these out. And the whole point of adding these onions now is just to wilt them. I'm not trying to roast them. So now that our onions are on here, we're gonna pop these back in that 375 degree oven, probably for about five to seven minutes until the onions have softened. Vegetables looking good. Onions have wilted nice on top. So you see they become a little translucent, so we start to see that they've cooked, but we haven't really caramelized them at all. That's not what we were shooting to do. The zucchini and squash got a little more color on it. I'm just gonna go put these to the side here. We'll let them cool a little bit more while we make the mixture for the quiche. Making quiche super simple. We start with the eggs. All right, so we'll go ahead and add the cream, add the milk, and I'll season it with a bit of salt and pepper. Feel good about that. And we are ready to assemble our quiche. I'm gonna start by adding the vegetables directly into the pie shell. This quiche will be pretty filled with vegetables, which is what we want. Like, I don't know if I like the idea of like a quiche that's just kind of like the egg custard. It's nice to have like a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go right into the pie crust with these. We're gonna just go ahead and pour a mix in right over the top. I'm gonna pop this into that preheated 350 degree oven. And what we're really looking for is if we stick, say, a toothpick into the quiche, it comes out clean. This looks awesome. Definitely very rewarding to see this beautiful quiche. So a couple things to look at here. The crust you can see is now cooked. The custard itself has kind of risen, it kind of becomes kind of puffy as it cooks and it smells wonderful. I'm gonna set the quiche aside for the moment and then we're gonna make our roasted red pepper salad. I'm usually not one to discriminate against pre-made things from the supermarket, but I will say there is a very, very, very big difference between canned roasted red peppers and the ones you can do yourself. So if you're gonna do this, do it right. First thing we're gonna do, literally, I have a little bit of olive oil here. I'm gonna get just one very thin layer of oil on here, and what this is gonna do is help conduct the heat to blister the outside of these peppers and help them char. Once we have them coated in oil, you can see they're shiny. We're gonna put them in the oven under the broiler setting on high, and we're gonna char them till they're black, basically, on all sides. Peppers are looking nice. They're gonna be very difficult to peel right now, primarily because they're very hot, but also the skin tends to really adhere to the flesh. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in a bowl, we're gonna cover them with plastic wrap, and the steaming that's gonna happen inside is gonna kinda loosen the skins a little bit and help us peel these later. 
I'm gonna work right over this bowl. You see the skin almost just falls off. You see this pepper, it looks kind of like raisinated almost, but it's still holding its structure. Raisinated. I don't think it's a word. That's my nickname in high school. The raisinator. So now that we've removed the skin, we're gonna go ahead and cut the peppers. So although they are relatively expensive, they do yield a lot. Peppers are cut, time to dress this. Now this is not like a normal salad. Think of this as kind of like we're marinating the peppers. So we're gonna add the oil, the vinegar, and chopped parsley to this right now. And actually the longer it sits, it's gonna become more flavorful. I would say this might be my favorite food, to be completely honest. I love roasted red peppers. Quiche is ready to cut. We're ready to plate the dish out. So our quiche is room temperature right now. Some people like to eat quiche hot or warm, and you don't want to cut it while it's hot. It might just kind of fall apart. So before like just going in there and like, you know, picking it up, pretty aggressive as like an infomercial. Like you want to release it. Just make sure it's like released and see if I can get it out of here without completely breaking it. Am I nervous? No. I'm not nervous. Cool, so we have our slice of quiche, looking nice, looking substantial. I'm gonna put the pepper salad right on top of the quiche. I just think that looks nice. And here it is, four delicious portions of summer squash quiche with roasted red pepper salad coming out to $10.72, which is $2.68 a serving. So let's give it a shot. The flavors just go so well together. Roasted red peppers go amazingly well with eggs on their own. They go so well with zucchini and yellow squash. It's kind of a no-brainer in terms of flavor combinations. Good amount of vegetables overall here between the peppers, the summer squash, the zucchini. You have an egg custard and you have a crust that obviously contributes a lot to how substantial the dish is. For dinner, we're gonna be making a dish of rigatoni carbonara. I think you're gonna be amazed how easy this is, in fact, to make in your home. It's pretty common to go to a restaurant in the United States and get carbonara, and it's made with cream or something else to kind of stabilize the sauce, but that really takes away from the fact that the sauce is really predominantly egg. Most of the time when you see carbonara, you'll see it with spaghetti or bucatini or some kind of long pasta. We're making the carbonara with rigatoni because that's how my mom likes it. Hey, mom. This dish comes together very quickly, so before we even start making the sauce, have your water on the heat to boil to cook your pasta. So traditionally, when you see carbonara, they might be using pancetta or guanciale. We're gonna be using bacon today because it's available and you can find it in any store, and it really comes out very delicious. We're gonna go right into our pan here with the bacon. This pan right now is cold. I want it to come up kind of relatively slowly. You don't want to put it into a super hot pan because what will happen is the outside will get really cooked and the inside will still be very fatty. When we put it into a cold pan and let it cook from cold, it will render out nice and slowly and get this kind of little bit of crispiness that we want. So it starts to sizzle, a little rendering happening here, water's boiling. I think when people think of carbonara, they think it's like this big ordeal. This dish, you could probably bring everything together in the time that it takes the water to boil. All right, we got a good sizzle going. We're gonna make our egg mixture. So six eggs, three of which are gonna be whole, and three we're gonna separate and just use the yolk. Adding the yolk of the last three eggs is really just gonna contribute to the creaminess of the dish. So I'm just gonna whisk the eggs together before I add the cheese. Dish calls for a lot of cheese. You're gonna end up with a pretty thick mixture. The cheese will thicken this mixture. That's what we want. With our egg mixture ready to go, our bacon is almost there. I'm just gonna lower the heat a bit. We want this to kind of cool off a little bit. So we're gonna just let this sit here, ready to get this thing going. It is a fast process. We have our pasta water. I'm gonna season the water first, abundantly. I always feel like this is one of those things, we talk about seasoning pasta water, see people do one of these. It's not really gonna do much. Lesson is, season your pasta water, it'll make the pasta taste better. Time to add the pasta. Rigatoni's going in. Give it a quick initial stir, just to make sure it's not sticking anywhere. And this is gonna cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. Before we strain the pasta, very important is to reserve some of the pasta water. This will come in handy if we need to adjust our sauce a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of the pasta water to this bacon pan, just to kind of loosen bits of bacon that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. When it's time to strain the pasta, which is now, you gotta be ready to go. This process happens very quickly. Now that I've loosened off some of the solids from the bottom of the bacon pan, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put this at the bottom of this pan. Strain pasta in. I'm gonna put my egg mixture into this pot now. I need to be ready to stir it. I'm gonna add a touch of water. 
so it gets a little creamier. A couple of things are gonna happen while you're stirring this pasta. The heat from the pasta itself is gonna start to thicken the egg a little bit, as well as as the temperature starts to cool down, the whole mixture is just gonna get a little thicker in general. I'm gonna season with a good amount of black pepper here, some salt. So you're looking to get this creamy sauce coming out of this. The consistency of the sauce is going to change. So I wanna let it cool down a little bit here first, because what happens sometimes is once it cools down, it becomes very tight. The pasta absorbs all the sauce, and then you don't really have this nice sauce consistency. We're all set here. While this cools down a little bit more, I'm gonna grab the plate, we're gonna finish this up. Give it one more stir before I scoop it into the bowl. Looking nice and creamy, that's what we want. A Little bit of black pepper, a little bit of cheese, and we are set. And that's it, super easy. Four portions of rigatoni carbonara for $9.20, coming out to $2.30 a portion. Cheap and quick, my nickname. Let's give it a shot, feeling good about it. It's hard to mess this one up, to be honest. I mean, there's nothing not to like here. A warm egg sauce, crispy bacon, it's delicious. You saw how easy it is to put together. There's only a few ingredients and it looks very simple, but when you dig into this thing, you're gonna taste tons of flavors and it's super substantial. I hope today's recipe showed you that eggs are much more than just breakfast and that by knowing a few different techniques, you can use eggs to take your cooking to another level. You wanna hear something pretty cool about eggs? When you try to spin a raw egg, nothing happens. But if your egg is properly hard boiled, when you spin it like this, it'll spin like a top. It goes on forever? Not for, it doesn't go on forever, it goes on for a while. It's actually pretty impressive. Nice. Spin some eggs. Ta-da-dee.